Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Math. Uh, we've been taking a look today at some trig functions. Uh, today, we're, now we're going to take a look at uh, some trig identities. Uh, we don't really have much time or space to uh, prove all of these identities, so if you're looking for uh, strong proof of all of them, uh, you might as well go ahead online or do some research um, to see the proofs of these identities, or you can go ahead and check out our pre-calculus book. Uh, either one works. So the Pythagorean identities are the first set of identities we're going to look at. It's the only set that we're going to prove. Um, so let's take a look at a triangle X, Y, and uh, hypotenuse R that would correspond to this X, Y coordinate. And uh, we know that X squared plus Y squared equals R squared. Because it's a right triangle. So we're going to divide the whole thing through by r squared and uh, rearrange it a little bit. So we have x over r squared, all, quantity all squared, plus y over r quantity all squared equals 1. But we know from taking a look at trig already that this is just cosine of theta and sine of theta. So we have cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. That's probably the most important trig identity. Uh, it's something you're going to constantly see, and you're going to be able, or you're going to need to uh, be able to reduce uh, equations that have cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. Uh, you might need to uh, rearrange equations that have uh, values like those in order to uh, reduce it to this. But this is one of the main trig identities we're uh, going to encounter. Uh, if you go ahead for cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1, if you go ahead and divide uh, the whole entire thing by cosine squared theta, it gives you uh, the second identity, 1 plus tangent squared theta equals secant squared theta, or you could go through and divide by sine squared theta. You get uh, cotangent squared theta plus 1 equals uh, cosecant squared theta. So uh, now we're going to take a look at the sum and difference identities. Uh, the plus and minus signs are not there uh, to confuse you. Uh, you just need to make sure that you're looking at the correct convention. So if we have cosine of theta plus phi, uh, the uh, expanded version is going to be cosine of theta cosine of phi minus. See how that minus and plus on the top and bottom, uh, excuse me, both on the top correspond. So it's going to be cosine theta uh, cosine phi minus sine theta sine phi. Um, other way around, it would be minus and a plus. And then sine plus or minus uh, theta and phi, uh, the uh, signs stay the same. So if you have plus, you have plus in the middle here. If you have minus, you have minus. And it's uh, sine theta cosine phi plus or minus cosine theta sine phi. Uh, that identity is normally really useful in uh, Go ahead and in uh, proving these other identities, uh, we could go ahead and separate this so it could be sine of two theta equals sine of theta plus sine of theta, uh, excuse me, sine of theta plus theta, all uh, one sign, and then you simply have sine of theta plus theta, and what it would be is sine theta cosine theta plus cosine theta sine theta, just two cosine theta sine theta, and then cosine uh, two theta, you could go through a similar process. Uh, using the uh, cosine sum identity. Um, half angle identities, uh, again, you could do so um, by setting this angle as 2 theta and this angle as just theta, and that's how you might come up with these identities. Um, we tend to try to stay away from them a little bit because the uh, plus or minus can really play a factor in changing uh, our equations. Uh, and then we have co-function identities. Uh, there's only three of them written out here. There's actually three more. So sine of pi over 2 minus theta is cosine of theta. Uh, you could also do cosine of pi over 2 minus theta is sine theta. Tangent pi over 2 minus theta is cotangent of theta. Uh, conversely, cotangent of theta, uh, excuse me, cotangent of pi over 2 minus theta is tan theta. And then secant pi over 2 minus theta, cosecant of theta, cosecant of pi over 2 minus theta would give you secant of theta. And then last, we have the reduction identities. Uh, these are actually pretty easy to visualize. So if you have a sine of negative theta, it's going to give you negative sine of theta. 
So if you're going ahead and think of an angle in, say, the first quadrant, uh, that's going to be positive here. And when you take the negative angle, what it's going to do is send that angle below the x-axis. So that makes sense that sine of negative theta is negative sine of what theta is. Uh, if you think of cosine of negative theta, also in the first quadrant, you have a positive value of cosine, and then you go ahead and take negative of that angle. Well, it's just going to correspond to the angle on the opposite side of the positive x-axis, or in quadrant 4, and it's just going to still be positive because cosine is positive in 1 and 4. And then tangent of theta is a very similar case with uh, sine of theta. So we're going to use these identities in uh, verifying some trig equations. Uh, it's going to be really important to be able to use all of these identities to uh, manipulate uh, trig equations so they're a little bit easier to work with or they look a little bit more uh, like what we want them to look like. So verifying identities, um, there's a couple things that you can use. Um, obviously, you want to use algebra to uh, manipulate the equation. Uh, obviously, you want to use all of the identities uh, that are possible. You want to make sure that um, you're making the two sides of the equations equal. Uh, look for factorizations. Uh, again, that's something that's really important uh, in the uh, Pythagorean identities. Um, a lot of factorizations are going to be used in that. Um, do not add or multiply both sides. So basically what that means is we could not take this equation up here and to verify this identity that this side equals this side, we can't subtract cosine squared theta from both sides, or we can't multiply the whole equation through. Um, so don't add or multiply on both sides. Uh, when in doubt, simply stay on one side. And then obviously you want to combine like terms and separate other terms. Um, that's very intuitive. So we're going to jump right into this example. Sine uh, to the fourth theta plus cosine squared theta equals cosine to the fourth of theta plus sine squared theta. So we're going to go ahead and work with the left side of this equation and leave the, com the right side completely alone and see if we can manipulate this to become that. So the first thing I'm going to do is make this a sine squared squared. But we know that sine squared theta from our first trig identity, we have cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. So sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared. So now we're just going to go ahead and uh, multiply that all out because it's going to be a little bit easier to work with like that. So we have 1 minus 2 cosine squared theta plus cosine of the fourth theta uh, plus cosine squared theta, uh, which is really cosine of the fourth plus 1 minus cosine squared theta. But again, we've already used the Pythagorean identity on this side. And we get this equal to cosine squared, a cosine to the fourth plus sine squared. So as you can see, we have manipulated the left side of the equation. And without changing anything on the right side, we have manipulated this left side to look exactly like it. So we have verified uh, that those are equal. So now we're going to take a look at secant of theta over cosine theta minus tan theta over cotangent of theta equals 1. Uh, let's go ahead and change the secant into cosines and the tangent and cotangent also into sines and cosines.
So we're going to have uh, 1 over cosine squared theta equal uh, minus uh, sine theta over cosine theta all over cosine theta. Sine theta equals 1. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and change these terms up. Uh, this is going to be sine squared theta over cosine squared theta, and this is going to be 1 over cosine squared theta. So, as you can see, it's a little bit small here. I'm going to go ahead and bring this up. So we've gotten the denominators in these two terms to be the same. That's pretty sweet because we can combine what's on the top and we also know that it's going to be 1 minus sine squared theta all over cosine squared theta. But from that Pythagorean identity, again, we know 1 minus sine squared theta is just cosine squared theta. And we don't even need to uh, show anything else. We know that that's just going to be 1. And we have verified that this equals 1 without uh, manipulating the one on this right side at all. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at uh, cosine theta plus sine theta over uh, cosine theta minus sine theta equals one plus two sine theta all over cosine of two theta. Um, this time we're going to need to uh, use one of those double angle identities. Uh, and what I'm going to do is this time we're actually going to need to manipulate both sides. Uh, you need to make sure that you do that separately. What I'm going to do to manipulate the left side is multiply by cosine of theta plus sine theta all over cosine of theta plus sine theta. So cosine of theta minus sine of theta times cosine of theta plus sine of theta is cosine squared of theta minus sine squared of theta. And this is uh, cosine of theta plus sine of theta all squared. Um, but we can go ahead and uh, use one of our identities. Uh, in this case, we're going to look for uh, cosine squared of theta minus sine squared of theta. We can go ahead and look at our identities. We see that cosine of 2 theta equals cosine squared of theta minus sine squared theta. So we can go ahead and just plug in cosine of 2 theta right there. And what I'm also going to do is uh, go ahead and multiply out this uh, square. Now, again, we can uh, reduce this equation. Uh, excuse me, this is supposed to be sine of 2 theta. And uh, we're going to go ahead and reduce this because we have a cosine squared and a sine squared on the top. Those combine to make 1, so it's really 1 plus 2 sine theta cosine theta. And 
as we know from uh, one of our uh, double angle identities, two sine theta cosine theta is really just sine of two theta. So I thought I was going to have to manipulate both sides of the equation in this case, but by noticing that cosine squared of theta minus sine squared theta equals cosine of two theta, I actually didn't have to uh, elaborate on this side, and uh, we verified that this equals this without manipulating the right side at all. So the last one we're going to take a look at, I'm going to erase some of this and rewrite it, is uh, sine two theta cotangent of, times cotangent of theta plus tan theta equals two. So uh, what I'm going to do here is first replace the sine of two theta with uh, the double angle identity and then replace these with sines and cosines. And now all we really need to do is uh, go ahead and multiply through. So the first term is going to be 2 cosine theta cosine theta, and then the second term is going to cross out these. And uh, if you're being intuitive here, you're going to pull out the two and realize immediately that those are both just squared terms. And again, we're going to see that Pythagorean identity, and this value is just going to be two. And that's what we had it equal to uh, originally. So again, we have verified another identity. And uh, Again, just remember the most important steps uh, for verifying identities when you're given a problem like this. Uh, look for all possible uses of your uh, trig identities. Uh, make sure that you don't add or multiply terms on both sides of the equation. Um, and make sure you're combining like terms, factoring, uh, getting denominators to be the same, numerators to be the same uh, at all possible junctions. That way um, you have the uh, cleanest and best looking um, sides to work with and manipulate. So that is how you verify trig identities.